and it was early 1980s and you know fresh from the seminary Clearham was my first home when I came and Jack Acherian Alice her Mona's mom many many people from the church they accepted me right away Father Diran of course he was the pastor of the church and my brother Hagop was here in Cleveland so I came to visit him and the experience of getting accepted right away was uh, really homecoming for me because with that hesitation they asked me how they could help me to stay here in Cleveland to persuade me in Cleveland because it's my purpose was to go back to New York and fortunately I stayed here for six months before going to New York to continue my education and my career while serving in New York and within that six months fortunately I met the life of my life, Louise, <laughs> who <laughs> persuaded me that uh, Cleveland was actually the best location in the nation and to come home after we got married. So those were really great years for us. But I, I really feel very fortunate that I had the opportunity and being you know, in the seminary and learning our faith, learning the history, learning our uh, way of worshiping and you know expressing in Armenian way our Christian faith. I feel very fortunate and how rich it is that I can understand, I know what it is, I know the mystery of it, I know the, the thoughts that our forefathers have put in into, you know, making us so close to Christ. And I feel very fortunate that I know what it means to be on the altar, to serve on the altar, to partake in Christ's body and blood. For a lot of people, you know, when I tell them that I truly believe every Sunday when I take Holy Communion, I'm actually partaking in Christ's body and blood. You know, it's for them it's something beyond their understanding, but for me it is. Without that, my Sundays, our Sunday is not complete. And equally, my family feels the same way, especially my wife. And to my wife and I, we try to install the same feeling, understanding comprehension into our kids so they equally get enriched like we are. It is very challenging there. It is, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's all priorities and balancing. You have to have, you know, balanced life at home, at work, at your faith, at your church. And for us, it's the Church is very important part of our daily life. So without the church, really, it's almost like our week is not complete. So just like every morning we get up, we have a breakfast, we have lunch, we have dinner, we have homeworks, we have work life. The church is part of our life also. So we never feel that because we didn't take our girls to the soccer game or to the tennis game or to the golf game, they missed something. On the contrary, they have opportunities just finding the right balance for them, for their activities, at the same time making sure that the spiritual life was never short, lived in their life. So. And I know the girls understand that how important it is. We had many, many Sundays that they complained. Why do we have to go to the church every Sunday? Our friends don't go. Well, in our house, we do things differently. 
we try to keep a balanced life and I think we all are busy. I, I am busy, I run a business, I have family at home, I have chores at home to do, but still the church is part of my daily life. We are very, very, very fortunate to have such a treasure here in Cleveland, Ohio. And thanks to all our forefathers who came here, who suffered, who dedicated their life, time, and treasures to build a place, a small Armenia for us, for the generation to come, to enjoy. It has been over 50 years now that so many families have come, enjoyed the friendship, prayed together, learned about our culture together, and it is so important for the current generation and future generation to know how the previous generation spend their time and their money in order for us to enjoy. So equally, it's our obligation to make sure that the coming generation equally enjoys the work that we're doing today, so that in return they, in their time, contribute to their future children.